Okay, whichever you prefer. Okay. Okay, so my name's David Holden. I'm the MC and creator of the Holistic Cancer Congresses. And I want to introduce again my very great pleasure, my dear friend, Dr. Bruce Lipton. Bruce, you get a stunning performance at the first event in 2012. We got brilliant raves from everyone there. Excellent, 10 out of 10, bring him back. You were by far the most popular presenter. And knowing you and your work, I understand why. Could you perhaps give the audience a brief little glimpse of what you're going to be talking about at the 2013 event in March? Yeah. We basically have to understand, David, when we start talking about uh, cancer and healthcare, that conventional medicine has uh, uh, an ability to get involved, but its effectiveness is actually dwindling over time. And the significance is, is that there's a misunderstanding of the nature of how biology works in general, how cells work, and specifically how cancer cells work. Because we're still behind uh, with old beliefs, conventional beliefs about genetics. And this is why the emphasis on <coughs> genetics and heredity uh, as the primary understanding of the mechanism behind cancer. Well, the simple truth is this. Um, less than 10% of cancer has a hereditary basis to it. Right. That means 90% of cancer is related to environment and lifestyle. Okay? Right on. And it's also important for people to recognize, uh, especially because they say, well, I have a, a cancer and I have a cancer gene. I just want people to understand very clearly. A cancer gene doesn't mean you have cancer. No. Cancer gene means you have a propensity toward having cancer. A predisposition. A predisposition. Well, the point about it is this. Uh, let's say uh, a cancer gene, uh, BRCA2 or something like that, has, let's say, 65% of the people have cancer that have this gene. Right. Well, that's very interesting. The most important question, though, is how did 35% of the people that didn't get the cancer and still have the gene, what happened in their lives? Right. The genetic aspect also falls apart when we start to understand the nature of identical twins. Identical twins grow up genetically identical, and yet one can die from a cancer and the other have a, a normal life. And all of a sudden we start to see that this connection between genes and reality is a bit shaky. But it's even more shaky because frontier science has revealed a new understanding, and if people don't understand this, this new understanding is called <coughs> epigenetics. Right. And you say, well, genetics, epigenetics, they sound the same. I go, wait, wait. When I say, David, genetic control. That means control by genes. When I say epigenetic control, epi, the prefix, a little epi is a revolution because epi means above. If I want to say, what's the name for skin? I say, underneath is a layer called the dermis, so what's the skin called? Epidermis, above the dermis, okay? So when I say epigenetic control, what I'm actually saying is control above the genes. Well, this is profoundly important. Because conventional science says the control is in the genes. But the new understanding of genetics, and this is not just frontier science, this is the leading edge of biomedical science today. Epigenetics reveals, no, it's environmental signals that control and regulate the genes. Right. So here's the point. Before you go and try and mess with the genes, the above a right-in control is the environment. Well, what's the environment? Nutrition. Is an environment because that's what I bathe my cells in, my nutrition. Okay, uh, the world that we live in constitutes an environment. The pollution in the air, the uh, the electrical pollution that is uh, from broadcast. Okay, uh, the water pollution. All uh, of these are environmental environment too. Uh, yeah. Sorry, and a more emotional environment. Oh, well, that's the one I was going to come to. Yeah. Because the next one, and this is now the most profound. Uh, <coughs> The most important environment is the one we perceive, yes. meaning how do you see the world? Mm -hmm. And this becomes important because this is the source of the control that regulates epigenetics, which in turn regulates genetics. Mm -hmm. And so we have been saying, well, genes control life, and then by that nature, since we didn't pick the genes as far as we know, since we can't change the genes if we don't like our traits, uh, and I say, well, where would you get the genes from? Well, it was passed down through heredity, and it controls your life then all of a sudden you acquire, I am a victim of heredity. Oh, there's cancer running in my family. And all of a sudden the expectation that you too shall be a recipient of this cancer. So the nocebo effect kicks in. Well, that's the, that's the part where epigenetics mm -hmm. comes in. Because epigenetics says this. 
the cells adjust their biology to the environment. But your cells inside your body, they can't see the environment. My liver cell cannot tell you what we're doing out here. My liver cell can understand the environment only through the action of my nervous system. Right. That's why I have eyes, ears, nose, taste, touch. My nervous system reads the environment and then passes along the information to the cells about should we be in growth or should we be in protection or uh, what's going on with our lives. So the nervous system is like the Internet that connects all the 50 trillion cells in your body to what's going on in the mm -hmm. world. Now, what happens in humans, which is different than other organisms in a large part, is between the perception of the world and the signal sent to the cells is the mind. The mind interprets the signal. Why is this relevant? Do the cells get a direct reading of the environment? The answer is no. They get a reading of the environment as interpreted by the mind. Right. Good okay? distinction, yes. And that's a very different thing. Mm -hmm. I could live in a healthy environment but have a very, very bad attitude. Yeah. yeah. And what's going to happen? Are the cells going to see, oh, he's just living in a wonderful environment but he just doesn't see it that way. No, my cells are going to see what I perceive. And as I put stresses on the system, I change the function of my biology and my immune system. And in fact, stress turns out to be the primary issue in almost all diseases today. Yes. Because stress directly results in a shutting down of the immune system. Mm. Mm. And this is, it's very interesting, people should know this very quickly, is that um, when you're under stress, you release stress hormones, cortisol, etc. Sure. Um, that the, they shut down the immune system because mm -hmm. if you're under stress, that means you're really running for your life in some way. Fine, fine. And, and that's dealing with the outside world. Mm -hmm. The immune system deals with the inside world. Mm -hmm. Well, the, you know how much energy the immune system uses is go back to a time you were really sick. Mm -hmm. You couldn't get out of bed, you didn't have that much energy because the immune system mm -hmm. takes a lot to get the thing running. So if you're being chased by that proverbial lion and you have a bacterial infection in your gut, uh, where do you need to put the energy? And the answer is the heck with the bacterial infection. And you got to <laughs> you got you to put all of the available energy into running. What's the point? The design of the system in a state of stress is to shut down the immune system to conserve energy. Yes. The intention, though, was created a million years ago when the only stress you had was to run away from the lion. And after the lion's gone, there was no more stress. It was never designed for the world in which we live, which is stress 24-7, 365. Mm -hmm. And this is why all the illness, essentially 90% or more of the illness on this planet, stems from this. The stress interferes with our chemistry of our body. The stress interferes with our digestion processes. The stress interferes with every relationship of your body and to mm -hmm. life. And how we emote externally. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can say, Bruce, um, okay, there's a patient with cancer, what should we do? And you say, uh, oh, you should give them a medicine to fix uh, the, the thing there. And I go, what's happening in the body is a symptom. Just trying to fix that little cancer, you're <coughs> missing the point. It's epigenetics. It's above that genetics. And that's where we have to understand the nature of the environment, the nature of the new science, the nature of empowerment. The, the concept you brought up of placebo and nocebo. Right. Most people are familiar. Placebo, positive thinking, take a drug that's even made out of sugar and not know it, but think that drug is going to work, and it works. Right. It's only because you believe it to work. Precisely. What most people fail to understand is, well, that's a result of having a positive belief. Nobody says, well, what's the result of having a negative belief? And the answer is, well, there's actually a name for it, as you brought up, nocebo effect. What does that mean? It's the result of negative thinking. I said, well, what does that do? Heal you? And it's like, oh, of course not. <laughs> negative thinking is what causes most of the illness. So it's not the power of positive or negative thinking. First of all, it's the power of thinking. Right. And secondly is which direction are you thinking? Because you're going to move the physiology in that direction. And all of a sudden you move in a good direction, placebo. But mm -hmm. negative, it leads to a breakdown of the system. Mm -hmm. And if you just look at the world and the way we live and the population and the programming and the news and the radio and what's ever coming across the internet, you realize how much we are in stress. Yes. And how do you fix this? Well, you've got to fix your environment. 
You got to take care of your nutrition. Turn the yeah. You got to take care of your nutrition. You got to take care of your outside environment. You got to take care of your thoughts. You got to take care of your energy. Why? You have to take care of your environment, and then the cells will respond. So the nature of coming to this conference is so critical for this reason. There's an opportunity to hear a new science. There's an opportunity to new insight. To see that there are alternative pathways to dealing with cancer outside of the established route. And it's very significant just for people to understand. You know, uh, I taught in medical school, and, and the significance, I say, well, you know what? Today's therapy for cancer is pretty much exactly what 1930 was. In 1930, there were two ways to fight cancer. Mm -hmm. Radiation mm -hmm. and chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. And guess what? <laughs> Same They're still there. Mm. The point is, it hasn't worked since 1930, mm. and that's because it's missing the concept that there's a control that's higher than the cells. So it's a missing piece of the puzzle. It's a missing piece, and you cannot solve the puzzle if that piece has been left out. For sure. And so coming to this conference is an opportunity to hear about this piece that's been left <clears> out, <throat> right. and the relevance it has on health. And the other presenters will all provide information that says, yes, there are alternative ways to deal with an issue with much more satisfactory outcomes. Yes. For the patient and for the world. Mm. And so the holistic uh, conference on cancer that you're putting on is a resource to see that things have changed. Mm. And, and the question is, are you at the leading edge of the change or are you still following back in the old pathway, well, this conference is an opportunity to bring you up to the front edge of that, that uh, leading edge. So in essence, we're introducing the new quantum science and how it can be applied to cancer research, treatment, prevention, yeah. etc., and healing, of course. Well, it's called the energy, okay? And, and then all of a sudden, you go, oh, new age, and I go, no, wait, wait, no, energy is physics. Yes. <laughs> energy is physics. It's science. Uh, and in fact... The, the difference between the old physics, Newtonian physics, and quantum physics is profound, and it is the pivot point of the difference between the old way of health and the new way of health is the same point. And that goes this, the old way of health is based on a Newtonian physics. Newtonian physics is the study of the material physical realm. Right. With the exclusion of the invisible realm. Well, in 1925, quantum physics came in, it didn't throw away Newtonian physics, it's no. still there, but it's a bigger science, and the basic understanding of the bigger science is everything is made out of energy, mm. and everything is entangled. Mm. Whatever you perceive as being physical is just another form of energy. Correct. Yeah. Well, the relevance then, quantum physics says, well, you've left out the energy in Newtonian physics. Quantum physics says, not only should you not leave out the energy, but from the understanding of quantum physics, the energy is more significant in shaping matter than matter is right. in shaping matter. Yes, right. So basically it says, what's the new science? It says, deal with a higher source of information. Right. And that higher source of information, which includes thought, is the field of energy. Mm. And this is the new science. Mm. And we're on the cusp. We're on, a, on an evolution of human civilization, and this is the evolution of healthcare as part of this whole evolutionary process that the world is facing at this right. very moment. Yeah. So, by, my recommendation, of course, is if you want to be involved in this field, to have insight as to where are we going, well, the conference uh, happens to be a, a, a great resource. For sure. And you're talking about energy. We're very blessed that we have new technology now. <clears throat> Dr. Thornton Streeter will be introducing the Biofield Viewer to the audience, which can now photograph with, with really sharp scientific accuracy. It's an FDA-approved device that will measure the energetic field around humans, in fact, all living things. I'm looking forward to actually hearing uh, Streeter's talk on that. So, me too, uh, me too. I'm looking all forward up. to that. This is the Australasian launch. So, if you want more of this wonderful man's wisdom <laughs> and to hear more about the new quantum science and how it can affect results that clinicians now are getting with cancer and treatment, prevention and healing, please come to the Congress. All the information is on the website, www.holisticcancercongress.com. We look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Go. Did you get anything? Sure as hell, the goddamn thing was recording. Yeah, it was recording fine. <laughs> yep, 15 minutes and 6 seconds. Okay, babes.